This week on Tabletop Witchcraft, we're going to do a second bonus video where we assemble and review this dome cutter from ShiftingLands.com. Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to put together this dome cutter from ShiftingLands.com. There's a lot of jigs out there for the Proxon, and depending on your crafting style, you probably don't need all of them. And to be honest, there's some out there that you can build yourself. But this is not one of them. If you have any use for building and using any type of dome in any of your builds that you want to cut out of foam, then this is something you're going to want to pick up. So. Let's figure out how to put this thing together, and let's get crafting. So I just wanted to say up front that uh, this video is not sponsored by Shifting Lands, but I picked this uh, jig up and figured, you know, a great opportunity to uh, just do a how-to on how to put it together and give a quick review on it. So uh, you're going to start out here by grabbing the slot and putting it in the sleuth of the Proxon. I just add a little bit of hot glue, line it up, and then you get a couple of these small little, uh, like, finished nails. Um, just hammer those right into place and just be careful about how much uh, wood glue you put on there so it doesn't get all over your proxon. Then you can go ahead and take a little bit of wood glue and apply that to um, these six spacers that are going to go into that base plate. And then add a little bit more wood glue to the top of each of those spacers. And then you can go ahead and uh, place the, uh, the ring on top of there. And it might be a little hard to kind of snap into place, but um, you know, just a little bit of like a light tap with a hammer and uh, it should, should slide in there just fine. Now you're gonna go ahead and work on the rotation section of the jig. And um, this is gonna fit underneath the ring section that we just kind of lightly hammered into place. So I like to go ahead and you know, keep it neat and uh, clean up all the wood glue off of those seams. Now we're gonna glue the cylinder into the base plate. And you just want a little bit around, you know, the, the perimeter of that thing. And um, push it into place, make sure that it's vertical. Um, and then go ahead and slide the rotation section of the jig on top of that cylinder. And then place this little ring on top of that. And now you wanna be careful to only get glue on top um, of that little like cavity right there. You don't want to glue it all around um, that rotation section of the jig because you want it to be able to spin freely. So that's all you got to do, just a little bit of glue to fill that hole. Now we're going to go ahead and um, lay out our eight mounts. Um, you're going to have four um, shapes, two large and two small of each. And we'll go ahead and take a little bit of wood glue, place it on that cylinder, and then press it into um, each one of these sections of the uh, of the mounts here and again it might snap in a little have a little resistance to it but that's fine um, and then go ahead and clean up the edge there and now these hooks you can add a little bit of wood glue on as well and you want to really be careful to study the picture when you go ahead and make these um, I mean really study them uh, to make sure that you're putting these hooks in in the correct direction so that they hang properly on the rotation section of the jig when you go to use it now, um, we just simply take that section, place it right on top of the smaller section of the um, element there. And you want to make sure the concave section on the bottom piece is pointing up. Um, I'll explain it a little bit later on. Um, that way, the screw, when you screw it into the foam, it'll spin freely like that. Um, same as before, a little bit of wood glue on top of that little cavity, um, just uh, enough to kind of hold it in place because you want to be able to spin like this. Um, once the uh, wood glue cures. And that element will slide right under the ring right there. Now when you're getting ready to use the uh, dome cutter, um, you want to make sure that your proxon wire is square from both sides. And then um, placing a square piece of foam on a circle cutter, um, just cut yourself out a um, uh, little circle here. And then uh, lining that up on the center, the, uh, the mount in the center of the foam, you're gonna take, they're pretty much like uh, sheetrock screws, and uh, fill up screwdriver, screw them right into the foam, 
and now that will allow the, uh, the mount to spin freely. Now that's where mounting those hooks in properly comes into play because as you can see those hooks go in and kind of slide down a little bit onto the rotation part of the jig. And these are just some little um, clamps here to secure that in place. I don't even need them, it holds in real tight um, without those. Now you can see the um, mount here, um, these lines um, or spaces line up and use this little key here to lock it in place. And then you want to go ahead and um, you know get the uh, the foam right up to the wire, turn the heat on. And I didn't wait a second. Um, I like to wait just a second here before I start rotating it. You can see um, the wire here um, came off a little bit of an angle. Um, so just give it a second to heat up. And you want to turn the um, dome cutter one direction only. See, I'm not going right and then left. Just go one direction to the right or left, pull the key out, rotate it, and then keep going on that same direction. It'll ensure that you get a nice um, even dome, depending on what shape you decide to go with. Again, there's four different um, styles you can pick from. Eight if you include the size difference on them. And it's a really fun jig to use. And as you can see here, um, again, I'm just going one direction and the foam stuck to the wire, no big deal. Um, just pull on it gently, turn the heat on for a quick second, and it'll pop right off. All right, once you've gone through um, and cut all the sides on there, just unscrew it, and you're left with um, a nice dome. All right, so here's the dome cutter. And um, one of the things you want to note in the directions, it talks about uh, if this gets really hard to move through this jig, that might be a little harder first. Over time, it will loosen up. You can take a little bit of uh, bar soap and rub it right here on this piece, and it will definitely make it smooth, go uh, through a lot smoother. Uh, with these jigs right here, what you want to make sure, um, again, is that you really, really um, look at the directions and make sure that you're putting all these pieces in in the correct um, direction. So you'll see here, the way this uh, jig is set up, when you place this in, you've got these two um, prongs and this one on the bottom, and they have to be facing down. That way when you place it uh, into the jig, the two go on the top and you get one down here. They'll slap in and then it slides down. That way it stays in place when you're using the cutter. So if you go through and do what I did, um, on this. I did all of these correct except for this one. You'll notice that again these are all pointing down and I screwed this one up and I glued those in pointing up. So um, this is wood glued in. <coughs> um, this is pretty much useless for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get those out. Uh, I might try and figure something out here that way I can maybe get some use out of it but unfortunately um, out of all these, this is the one I screwed up. It was the first one I did, and I didn't pay attention to the direction of uh, where those prongs were supposed to be facing. So uh, just make sure you do that when you um, screw these in, or actually uh, glue these in. And another thing to keep in mind too, um, this back piece of the jig on all of these has a, a section, you can't really see it in there now, but is um, uh, carved out for the like the the screw head to fit into so you want to make sure that that side is facing up when you place this piece on top because you don't want the flat section here facing up because then the screw won't be able to go all the way in there you'll see uh, it's just like a regular sheetrock screw so you see what I'm talking about here how that's tapered now if you were to have this back plate right here facing up, that flat piece is not going to allow for that taper to go in and then the screw head would actually hit here, right? So just two things to make sure that these are facing the right way, these guys, and then make sure that this back plate, the flat part is facing down and that the, uh, the um, carved out portion is facing up for that screw to fit um, flush into. Show you real quick. See, which allows it to still spin. So when I'm getting ready to make a dome, I'll go ahead and grab a piece of XPS foam, cut out a square, and draw a line from corner to corner. 
where those lines intersect is going to be the center of my dome. I can then take that center point, place it on my circle jig, cut out in the proxon, now I've got a nice round circle with the exact center already marked out. Then I can use that center point and take the element from the dome cutter, place it right in the center, and take measurements around that perimeter if I have to to make sure it's right in the middle. So I'm going to ensure to get a nice round dome when I'm done. Now, here in the United States, we could only get two inches of XPS foam in thickness. Um, over in uh, Europe, uh, they get uh, styro doors, what they use, I believe, um, where they can get pretty much any size thickness they want. But here, um, what I like to do, if I got to go any bigger than two inches thick, take a little bit of hot glue, place it on the XPS foam, sandwich the two pieces together. You don't need a lot. Now, when you do that, um, especially if you know if you don't use a lot here, when you go to cut it out on the proxon, that hot wire is going to go right through the hot glue, no problem. And a nice little side effect is when you make that cut nice and slow, it's actually going to kind of blend and melt the two pieces of XPS foam together. So you're going to get a nice uniform looking piece when you're done. Now Gerard, he likes to use a little bit of wood glue when he uh, sandwiches larger pieces together, but you know that might take a little bit longer for that to cure. Um, but that's just another viable option for you to use um, when putting these uh, pieces together here. So the Shifting Lands Dome Cutter, is it worth it? To me, yes. There is no way you can cut a perfect dome out of XPS without this. I've done builds in the past where I had to go and just buy like a, a five inch uh, styrofoam ball and cut that out and use it, but the texture isn't the same. I wish I had this for those builds. So am I glad I have it? Yeah, it's a great jig. Might not be for everybody, but if you gotta cut out domes, this is what you want. All right, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification for all further videos here on Tabletop Witchcraft. Until next time, I'll see you around.